Before we get started, I wanted to thank today's sponsor, Redstone Studios. Whether you're looking to just record some tracks or push your creative boundaries, Redstone Studios has you covered. They're friendly, professional, and they produced my second album, Postcards from the Sun, from start to finish. Now, on with the show! I never saw it. You should see this guy when he's got short hair and uh, no beard and stash. I, I've seen the picture. Richard Gear. <laughs> yes. Richard Gere. Oh, wow. Great Richard, Gere. Richard Gere. I look like everybody. Like, it's yeah. wonderful. It's great. <laughs> man, man of a thousand you look like known people, so that's wonderful. Well, now he looks like The Witcher. You should <laughs> be <laughs> wait, wait, let me see those shoulders. Jesus. <laughs> If you're enjoying the content Room 6 is putting up, please make sure you subscribe down there and hit the bell so you don't miss an episode. While you're at it, feel free to like and share, and uh, yeah, let's go. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local Las Vegas music scene and the people that make it, including me. I'm Josh, and today I am the guest, actually. They're, I'm at their place. Um, I'm here with on the road with a local band who have developed quite the following in the uh, Vegas metal scene. With a name that sucked less than the one they drew out of a hat, <laughs> and a unique and relentless, relentless sound rooted in standard and Scandinavian metal, uh, but often classified as melodic death metal. I saw a lot of that online. Uh, their band's history is a tale of ups and downs. Currently, things are looking up as they promote their new album, Dead to the Unknown. Welcome to Room 6 at your place, Minus. Yes, wow, they've got a plus for um, <laughs> Say hi. Go ahead and introduce yourselves. Mark, play bass. My name is Mauricio, I play drums. Miles, vocals and guitar. Jeff, guitar. Joshua, host. We are minus. Yes. Um, wait a minute. Plus He's in one. the band now. I'm in the band. Something's wrong. Minus plus one. Right? <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. Movie magic. All right. So first question. Actually, first, thank you very much for having me in. Thank you for being here. Thanks for coming. You don't have a drink. Oh, you do. He's drink. using my drink. He's using your drink. Why are you always drinking other people's <laughs> drinks? Hmm. Lovely, lovely Jameson oh, Irish whiskey. Sponsor me. So, how long have you all been in Vegas? Me, uh, fourteen years now. Okay. So when you're about five years then, you were like five years old. <laughs> no, no. For a minute. For a minute. Yeah. Join the we're, not, we're not talking about ages. Yeah. <laughs> I was here for probably six, seven years and I moved and then I moved back and another six, seven now, so probably fourteen. Right all together. Can I ask where you moved to? I went to California. I went to Southern California for a while. Right on. And then uh I'm originally still kill myself. Gave that up and came back. Gave that up, yep. <laughs> I've been here my whole life, so, uh, yeah, long time. That explains it. Miles yeah. is a real local. Yeah, same here. I've been here. How do you do that? I don't know. <laughs> well, when a man loves you, so <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. Um, how long have you been minus? I, I, I know the answer to this because I did my research, but for the people that maybe watch this video but don't know who you are, thanks for watching for whatever reason, uh, how long have you been minus? I'd say we effectively really kind of like like for this since 2015 i want to say yeah okay that's minus was like something different before it was kind of like mark and miles doing stuff together it's kind of like a studio thing and then it turned into a project that was them two and then two two other dudes um they recorded some music and then eventually through a lot of change the four of us came together and that's where it's been for the last three years, and that's kind of really the the identity of the band is is what we've done, the four of us. So yeah, truly, probably about three years going on four now. Right on. Who came up with the logo? Actually, uh, I I came up with the logo, and that's you know I was just sitting around sketching something, and I wanted I wanted something that kind of looked unique that when you see it you just recognize it without having to read it. Right. So it's just kind of like. 
I talked to a few friends that took marketing classes and they talked about like a diamond shape and how like that logos that do Actually, that. Yeah. They, you know, if you look at anything that's logoized in any mm -hmm. way, it's not even a word, but they, sure. they pick something. You know, like there's a shape there and the diamond shape. I was mm -hmm. just like, that would be really good because you can kind of like just maintain that and you see it and there it is. So, I mean, I came with the, the main logo now. If you're asking about this, the lightning thing, or oh, that, yeah. like Mauricio kind of. So, what is this? What is that What's behind it? Well, kind of wanted to. So, <laughs> the first minus record was with the other two dudes that we talked about, and that was called Fear the Slave, and that had just the name okay. or as a logo. Um, and then we came up with this sort of look for the album cover, and I just wanted something that would kind of look cool with that sort of background. Right. So I, was, I really was just kind of playing with shapes. It doesn't really mean anything. It's just kind of something that looked cool on a banner, and it looked cool in front of a... Okay, so the HV arrow thing doesn't really mean... It, it really can be whatever you want. It's kind of like up to... You heard it here first. Yeah. Um, I like Sorry how to let everybody down. No, it's fine. Know? I really like it. It's kind of like a corona effect around yeah. like the sun or stars. Yeah. I really dig it. Um, but the lightning... Or is it lightning, or is it just kind of dripping? <laughs> it's just dripping down. Yeah, that was again. That was Mauricio. He because <laughs> I, I thought it was lightning because it sort of changes the shape. Like Miles was talking about, like the, the original. If you leave just the letters, it kind of looks like a diamond, right? Um, but then if you add this like circular effect to it, it looks cool. Like I put it on the the bass drum head of my bass drum, and it's got that. It also follows the shape of that because it's circular. Yes. And, you know, we put it on this, and it looked cool. And we tried it on banners, and it looked cool. So it kind of was just going for shapes. Nice. So what it reminds me of is that art where someone will like hook up uh, electricity to a piece of wood and it'll just find. Yeah. Right. That's yeah, what it reminds yeah. me. Anyway, moving off from the shirt. Moving off from the logo. Um, <laughs> now, how long have you each been playing music? Anybody wants? Anybody? Oh, no, shit. Yeah. Uh, That's generally the response. Yeah. Mark? No, I've been playing <laughs> since I was like 12 years old, man. I picked up a guitar. My mom wanted me to find a hobby and a friend of mine had a guitar and I was like, I like that. And. You know, I said, hey, mom, I want to take guitar lessons. And she said, okay, cool. Thanks, mom. Yeah, and she said, here you go. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, we'll, we'll, we'll get into, like, where the singing eventually came in and all that stuff. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. <laughs> Next. Uh, I'm kind of same for me, actually, about around 12. I started playing drums. And uh, originally it was just kind of... To do it, and then eventually I started to develop my own taste, and it, I just ended up in, in like heavy music, and just grew in that direction. Right on. When um, how old were you when you got uh, first did a, a double bass? Shortly after that, actually. Oh, it was, really? Uh, yeah, I started because I started listening to like Metallica, and then from that it just got like heavier and heavier. So probably around like thirteen or fourteen. Mm -hmm. Not that it was good, but it was like that's when I first started like messing around with it. It's interesting because I I heard drummers say like oh I was thirty or you know I was much older yeah. before I felt comfortable or before I was doing music that required it. Yeah, no, that was like my goal. <laughs> right on. I looked up to a lot of drummers that did it, so I wanted to get there like as fast as possible. How about you, Jeff? Um, I started around like fifteen. Um, I actually had my dad played uh, music and guitar a lot and. Uh, Prior to that, he was trying to show me, and I wasn't really interested for a while. So one day, I was just like, I, I picked it up, and I was like, I want to learn, and I've been playing since 15, so. Right And you? Um, bass, since I was uh, what, 14, and then other things before that. Do tell. Um, well, I'm always interested when someone says, I started playing, bands. you know, I started playing drums, but I ended up playing lead guitar or something like so that. So I started playing... Uh, and orchestra pits and everything like that. I'm a I'm a low read specialist. Really? Yeah. Anything in the read. Oh wow! Uh, Your music, yeah. I think, would really yeah. accent. I think that. Would... I went to school for music education. Uh -huh. you know, and I was You're the music team. theory guy. Yeah. I was. <laughs> no, I'm not. Oh. Honestly, everything that I ever learned about theory, I've thrown out the window. I don't even. Honestly, I have that's... a red sheet music, and uh, I'm not going to say how many years. Trust me, I'm with you. I I just last year. Um, started up and uh, sing in a jazz band, and suddenly yeah, that's cool. Very I'm cool. So, I'm in a room with guys who like went to Berkeley School of Music. Yeah, and I used to play. Cool. Used to play sax. The second like the second the music bands. stops because they want to figure out what are we going to do here, I just say where am I singing? <laughs> just, just tell me <laughs> yeah. what part am I singing? 
Uh, you it, say, doesn't, it doesn't matter jazz, dude. It doesn't even have to have a key. Do whatever the fuck you want. Well, Somebody's it, gonna yeah, enjoy it matters it. if people it are could playing sound like complete keys. total dog shit. You're gonna have some guy in the back of the room. Here he goes. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck it's it. true, bro. Fuck it. No, I've been there. I've seen it. Honestly, it's, it's you're not, you're not, he's not wrong. No, I know. I've been at, I've seen it too. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not just jazz. There there's music where it's just like and like their mom or whatever is in the back just going, Yeah, that's my baby. And you're just yeah. like some bastards like tune a half step out yes. completely and they're like, No, it's got soul. It's like, no, you're tone deaf. It's about the notes you don't play. Fuck you, Miles Davis. Yeah. You can send all hate mail at room6lb at gmail.com. Thank you. So, <laughs> um, let's talk musical influences. Uh, who, who were you, what was the musical influence young that got you saying, I want to do that. I want to make music or learn drums or whatever. You know, collectively, I think we, we throw a bunch of stuff out on the, on the, t- on the plate here. Right. And there's certain things that we all agree that we like. And, like, you know, like bands like In Flames, As I Lay Dying, Mauricio, you got, this guy throws a shit pile out there and ends up turning us <laughs> on to like all kinds of stuff. I'm the, yeah, I'm the guy with the, with the giant playlist. Peruvian throw music, right on. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, the stuff that got me into music, though, was kind of, because if you consider my age at the time, mm-hmm. um, was like bands that were big then, and some of them are still big now, but like As I Lay Dying was a huge influence on me, Slipknot. Metallica, right. um, and then from there, once you start crossing that line of into metal, you start figuring out like the other bands in the underground. Right, there's so many genres yeah. or sub genres of yeah. metal. You're just like, I, I don't know what I like. <laughs> yeah. So then you just you start off with like more mainstream, and then it just kind of trickles down from there. But those are the three main bands that got me into wanting to play drums. There you go. Oh, thank you, sir. Hey, no, no problem. Full well, service here, Rimsek. You want to uh, go? You shouldn't try it, though. I know you're a oh, Jameson guy, but you should try I just, it. I'm not going to piss off the entire world and mix Bullet Rye with, or with, uh, <laughs> with Jameson. No, 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 no. Don't finish that, but then taste it. It's really good. Oh, well, where are you going to the bottle? Oh, we can leave it out. Front and center. Okay. We'll leave it right here see if we can get a sponsorship. <laughs> Bullet Rye, dude. Right here. We're right. going on tour. We need to... Yeah. Uh, That's actually my next I round. I love <laughs> everything this company puts out. Um, Fantastic. I, yeah. I, I have... I think I've tried it once, so I don't have a memory of what this tastes like. So this will be kind of a new for me. My drink of choice when it comes to bourbon is Evan Williams. Really? I actually like that oh, stuff. Oh, it's so smooth. It's really good. You can't get it in a bar. Well, especially for the, for the price. price. It's, it's amazing. Wonderful. Bucks? Ten for bucks the price, for... it's wonderful. It is oh, yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Buffalo yeah. yeah. Trace. I haven't tried it yet. Wonderful. I just never find myself in a situation where I'm But like, I'm a maker's man. Maker's Mark? Regular. Not 46, right? Whiskey people, mm-hmm. um, I, I I agree that uh, well that that's not why we're here. It's not why we're here. That's all we're talking about. I get excited. Be Let me start. Start. <laughs> no, no, there's too much. Let me sum up. Um, we need music, early musical influences from you, Jeff. Um, yes, happy. I started off like more like classic rock actually, again because from my my sure. dad and stuff. Um, then I just started getting it was just slowly getting heavier and heavier, and then I I you know once I heard Metallica, it pretty much. Yeah, that was the first thing that was like, wow. You went into like a thrash phase for a while, right? Yeah, I think it was like around that time, just all thrash, like those, you know, the big four, Testament, all that stuff. Subaltura. 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 Yeah. Now, I, I, you know, obviously during doing my, my research, my uh, deep dive, I did come, you know, saw Metallica definitely listed as one of the influences. Your uh, video for Collateral, especially. Every time you're singing, it's straight James Hetfield, the the, un, the light under the face, and, <laughs> the, the and uh, I was just like, "There's the Metallica." <laughs> Holy fuck! Yeah. You can't run that, from it, man. Dude, you can't. You can't run from you it. You can't. You are yeah. starving. I'm gonna, dude, I'm gonna like go up on stage yeah. wearing clown makeup and shit. And they're gonna be like, "Dude, look, he's trying to be like James Hetfield right now." No shit. It's so funny. Trust me, he's got David Lee Roth outfit doing the jumps. You. Hey, you must have gotten, you must have gotten Chad by now. Oh, the oh, fucking Jesus! Yeah, when we were on tour le- last year, <laughs> wait, wait, Chad Kroger started doing metal. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, so when we were at the Gas Monkey, there was this one guy. I can't remember his name, but he kept he kept going. Yeah, he kept coming up to me. He's drunk as fuck, and he kept going. Oh yeah, this photograph. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> doing that to me. And I'm I like, thought oh it my god, I'm gonna get fu- laid. Dude, fuck well, now, now that that's out there, let me just say, <laughs> my my drummer Sean Flume. The thing is, is I don't fucking see it, man. I would say it for Nickelback. Anyway. <laughs> He's a huge Nickelback fan. Oh, wonderful. He's not even Canadian. There you go. I never saw it. You should see this guy when he's got short hair and uh, no beard and stash. I, I've seen the picture. Richard Gere. <laughs> yes. Richard Gere. Oh, wow. Great Richard Gere. I look like everybody. Like, it's yeah, wonderful. It's great. <laughs> man you look, of a thousand look like known people, so that's wonderful. <laughs> well, now he looks like the Witcher. You should. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, let me see those shoulders. <laughs> Jesus, man. Wait, wait, wait. Give, give us one. <laughs> right now. Give, us, back. give us one of them. What? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Tie his hair back and put him on a horse. I yeah. swear. <laughs> Take totally that something. Horse, I can't. No, don't I can't win. No <laughs> um, did we get early influence from everybody? Um, you, Martin. Mm-hmm. What got you into the low read music? Oh, the low read shit? Um, Not low read. <laughs> I'm a fourth generation musician, and I just okay. started with saxophone and worked all the way through those clarinets, oboes, and all kinds of shit like that. And I just, I like, uh, I like swell. I like yes. big pieces of music yes. that like create a lot of emotion. I can actually hear that in some so, of your music. Definitely. Like you know when I'm when I'm playing bass, I don't even. For the longest, it's not it's not just bass and low and everything like that. I'm like, okay, we're a four piece. How can we sound larger? What can mm-hmm. I do as an accompaniment that's not only bass and carries that, but would be something interesting like a brass fanfare or something that carries in like like you know your French horn, your baritone section, or something else like that. What what? What would go here that's tasteful would accompany it mm-hmm. without overshadowing anything else that's going on. But so that's that's how I look at it. I want to see what we can do as far as uh, creating this big, huge wall of fucking sound with four guys and make you think, holy fuck, mm-hmm. how is that four guys? And there's not tracks that we're not... Yeah, yeah, using it's it's you're we're not using live. backing tracks. We're not using a click for all this and everything. The whole point is to be like, how are they creating that much sound mm-hmm. yeah. with what they have as a four piece? So that's that's how I approach a lot of things, and you know, mm-hmm. and 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 I like that. I like the the whole melody versus counter melody. And what you can do with the two to have them cross over and they completely switch and go in a different direction. Yeah, I, I was actually impressed with uh, the swells, but also with what you're talking about, where a lot of them, not so much syncopation, but cross fade, I guess, for lack of a better term. It, it oh. seemed like, you know, you, you, it's like this is going, this is going. And it's, it's instead of actually just like fading out completely and then some fading something in, they're overlapping. Like when a, right. like when a, a DJ does, you know, one track's on its way out and the other track syncs up. At the same time, yeah. and, and it takes over. Um, so, cool. What about current musical influences? What are you listening to now that you know gets you jazzed about playing music? Hans Zimmer. What? Hans Zimmer. Zimmer. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude. I, he's like one of the best score yeah. writers of all time. Yeah, you know, he did I, Batman, I, I like, I, movie scores. Uh, right. No, Robocop. Wow. Okay. Basil. Uh, Polaris, I think the guy's name is. I'm probably saying that wrong, so sorry. Basil? Basil? <laughs> I don't know. Basil Polaris. Oh, his last name's weird, but you know, the Robocop. Yeah. You know, film score there. Um, Going back to the swells. Yeah. So that is. you. Wow, you can knock him over with a feather right now. I did not expect <laughs> a metal band to say, well, listen to scores, music, movie scores. Well, I mean, here's the thing you can. Well, for me, I, I tend to look for music that I find very inspiring. Mm hmm. Um, and that, that day has passed for me already because, you know, you find that music in your teen, your adolescence, you know, like you find your your bands that they're your bands or your core influence right. and then you grow up and then you're kind of like every band that comes after that, you've heard that. And, or you're making that. Right. Yeah. It's, or you, it's hard to, you're doubling that up in some way and you're just kind of uh, like little Brendan Small said it this way. It's like, you know, a coffee filter and you're taking all your stuff and that makes sense. Nice. Like that makes sense. And... That's kind of what it is. So, you know, at some point you go, okay, well, cool. I love metal. I like writing metal, but listening to 
newer stuff's not doing it. So let's move somewhere else. Let's pull from other places. Yeah, the thing is, you can you can find metal in anything, and you can take mm-hmm. take anything out of any genre. That's what's beautiful. And, and about turn it. it fucking sick. Yep. The thing is, is like looking for that thing that somebody hasn't done yet. That's seeing what's part. so fucking metal about it, and like taking it, doing it your way, and then the next thing you know, you've created something that nobody's done before. But I'd say the in a way, it has been. It well, has been. If we're talking it about this, you to do this, we're right. talking about this. We're talking about music, writing music. You know, metal is a lot like orchestral orchestral music, where you can pull anything from anywhere and use it. Mm-hmm. You know, you can use jazz, you can use, I mean, I think everybody's done that. Like, even Dream Theater's done it blatantly out there where it's like, oh, fuck, they're doing, like, a, uh, some progression from, you know, like a, uh, like, what is it, like, Midwest-sounding piano or something. They'll bust into one of those if you've ever listened to it. Right. You know, that's what's cool it's, about the genre. It's, it's, it's flexible. Hooks. By the way, I noticed you have a dog bowl. Where's the dog? Oh, they're not allowed to Where's that? They're upstairs. Upstairs. They're, upstairs. they're, upstairs. they're, they're, they're very there. quiet. They didn't bark when I got here or nothing. They're good girls. Mine is a diva. I have to sometimes put in comments of what she's saying, like, get on with it, or you suck, or whatever, but <laughs> love you, Chloe. Um, <laughs> moving on to um, what's your favorite show memory as, as Minus? What's that memory? I mean, it could be good, it could be bad. I think, oh man, that's tough. That's why I ask it. <laughs> Because every time you say one, you remember the next. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's mine. Rough. Was a shout out we got from In Flames after that. We that was really that was cool. cool. That was that like was one of the most memorable things I could. I almost fell down a flight of stairs because I was walking up and I didn't even get to see that part. They had already yeah. gone on. And wait, wait, I was wait, wait, walking. Up, what happened? I was like, walking opening upstairs. Up, opening up for In Flames was probably. And one then of the I hear things. this shout out from uh, Anders and like. I almost like I miss a step. Oh, shout when out I to hear because I'm like shout out to you guys. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. I, I'm like holy shit, and I literally almost ate shit and fucking went down the stairs. Yeah, that was a pretty epic moment for for all of us. Nice. Right? Now, but you weren't playing that night. Pretty special. No, we opened. No, we opened. Oh, we opened that they, night. They, they, they gave up. us a shout out. They out. went up on stage and they gave us a shout out. Right on. Which they I didn't have to, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that was. Uh, I remember. I uh, not to make it about me, but. I used to sing, my very first band I sang in, uh, Magic Viewing Patch, MVP. Don't, mm. it, there's a story. Right. Um, we got to play, I, I walked into the San Diego Coach House, which was basically like the House of Blues for San Diego. It was, you know, really good sound system. To this day, I remember singing through that, and I was 22 at the time. I'm not 22 anymore. Uh, and no. I, I gave him an audio cassette. That's how long ago this was. Nice. You may not remember. Anyway. <laughs> so, and I, I was just like, hey, man, just wondering if, you know, everything. He's like, actually, do you guys ever hear of Iron Butterfly? Yeah. We, we need a local band to open for them. And I'm like, let me check their schedules. Yeah. They're, and, and I was 22. They were all 19. <clears throat> they had no clue who Iron Butterfly was. Even though they were like Stones fans and, and Zeppelin fans, they had no clue who Iron Butterfly was. And they said, my parents went crazy. So we got to open for Iron Butterfly. The problem is they're all 19, so they had to leave as soon as we were done playing. Right. <laughs> Iron Butterfly never once said anything to us about thank you or shouted out nothing. And uh, I remember talking to the singer, who I'm not even going to say your name, but you were a fucking dick. Uh, but yeah, it was just like, whatever, kid. You know, that was really, it was kind of like, man, it really hurt. But yeah, I got to, I, I can say, that's on the resume. I get to say I, I opened for Iron Butterfly. That's cool. It is cool because they sounded amazing. Right. <laughs> Didn't do a lot of Inagata de Vita, surprisingly. <laughs> In the Garden of Eden. Inagata de Vita. Oh, don't sue me. That's, uh, don't <laughs> sing with marbles in your mouth, buddy. <laughs> the Garden of Eden turns into Anagata de Vita. Anagata what? <laughs> <laughs> so, a- anybody else have a, a, a better favorite show memory? Or? Uh... We're going with that one. It doesn't have to be just as, as much. You know, it's like every every fucking show is like different. Man. <laughs> so, sure. I don't know. The last show is always the best show to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's actually the, most, the way to do it. That's the good way to be. The um, most recent show is always. So you, you, yeah. That, well, no, that, <laughs> not, that wasn't what, a show. What, what, that was this? Like, we played well, the, we, I forgot all we about had like the two box. Good actually, shows. Sorry, guys. We had two really <laughs> good shows back to back. And then yeah. we finished the year with like. The box. Is that the box, box with two X's? 
Yeah. 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 So I, I, you know, we did Lost Rages and then we opened for Inflames and then we. Yeah. Is the box basically like the dive bar? It's, it's pretty similar. similar. Actually, it's a little Sorry. worse. The dive bar is a little better. Yeah. Do they have is an angry it, Scotsman running Is sound? it bad that I completely <laughs> blocked no, out that it. show and forgot we played it? I forgot oh, wow. too. I forgot about it. Uh, yeah. Lost Rages actually was did. pretty was pretty awesome. Lost Rages was cool. That was nice. That was a different. Experience. That was really yeah. cool. That was yeah. great. That was a lot. So in Flames and, and Lost Rages. Great crowd response. Like, that was cool. I hear good things about Lost Rages. I haven't yet to make it. It's pretty cool. That was a good day. I've never seen a good lineup. We got to play the big stage. Well, one, day, stage. one day when this gets big enough and I have press passes, I can You're doing go it. to these You're things. And that's it. happening. You're getting that's going to happen. <laughs> All right. Um, from favorite show memory, which favorite venue? And it doesn't have to be one you played. Which favorite venue in town? House of Blues. Or it doesn't even have to be in town. Probably. House of Blues. House of Blues. Just the whole setup. Like, oh, my. It's, it's just. Yeah. Having two like sound best. people? I, I played there and I was just like. And then you hear it and you're like. It's the best I've ever sounded. I actually like the Hard Rock on on the Strip. That one's been my favorite. That's play. a really good one too. I saw Adam Ant there. Yeah. Not like not like way back in the day. This was like four or five years ago. My my bassist called me. I was like, Hey man, you want to go see Adam Ant? Yeah, I want to go see Adam Ant. <laughs> Hell yeah, let's go. And it was it, it, that man. <laughs> that man. How old is Adam Ant now? It's got to be like forties, fifties. Older. I hate to say this. We have no idea who that is. You know who Adam? Come no. on. No. <laughs> I'm really? sorry, yeah, we don't know who he is. Adam Ant? Do you know who he is? Mark knows who he is. I'm Boy. sorry about that. <laughs> Adam Ant. Don't date me, bro. That goes right over my head, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, I looked at Jeff. Like, so let me put it this way. Adam Ant's 80s. Okay. Huge. Mm -hmm. uh, huge in the 80s. And he came out. And this, like, like I said, it was like five, six years ago, something like that. Napoleon hat. Big old long Napoleon trench coat thing. And... Literally, that man for like an hour and a half straight, just boom, 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 and it was only the last two songs that he took off the jacket as a concession to like his age and how hot he was. Wow! wow. And I was sitting there going like, "You're he, he still fucking nailed it too, didn't he? he?" Yes, yes, he fucking did. I was like, "I, I wish I had money to go buy your merch." I, I, my God, um, yeah. So anyway, shout out to Adam Ants. So favorite venues we're going hard hard rock or uh, house of blues. House of blues. Yeah. House of yeah. The house of blues for me just because it's so. When I was learning how to play my instrument and I was in high school, I saw so many epic shows there mm -hmm. that for me to play there like every time is is excuse me, nostalgic almost. That is the cool thing about a place having a place like that here in town is if yeah, you're willing to if you're willing to deal with going to a casino, parking, paying to get in. You can see some amazing shows oh, you're yeah. not going to see anywhere else, or oh. maybe ever. Um, and then you also get to see a lot of local acts on that yeah. same stage, yeah. which is really cool. It's very uh, cool. Yep. So moving on from favorite venue, is there a dream show you want to play or, or dream tour you want to be part of? Vakken. Yep. <laughs> we're, we're working on it right we're now. We're working on that. So Stay tuned. Yeah. All right. Um, anybody else? No, that's it. Okay, that, that's we, had, it. we all wanted to. That, I have to say, you guys are of one mind on a lot of stuff. And we are. That's, it's that's refreshing weird. and it's also kind of disconcerting because I'm just like cranking through the questions. <laughs> Usually, it becomes tangentville, you know. <laughs> right. All right. Well, then, let's talk gear. All right. Yes. <laughs> And we'll start with the drummer. We'll, we'll get the, yeah, the we'll out. get the, now usually the, the drummer is the gear bar. Is that the yeah. way it is here? No. <laughs> well, is the, well, you gotta leave? What part? No, this is my fridge. Oh yeah, where Mark's They can see this. I'm talking, talking gear, and he's all about the fridge. No. <laughs> I'm all about a beer. Don't make me laugh, man. You make it come out my nose. <laughs> you need a beer. It yeah. burns. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it burns. You know what? I, I will. I will make thanks, bro. I'm not a yeah, huge so. ride fan usually. I'm not a complete dick. Don't look at me like that. Jesus I'm not a Christ. complete dick. I'm not. A, I'm not a, a, a rye fan usually. Can I ask for one ice cube, sir? Yeah. One, one rock, please. Oh, or two, whatever. Thank you. That's enough. That's enough. That way. Just in case I'm not a fan right off the bat, the cold kind of mellow out the house. <laughs> that's that's never been yeah. never yeah. 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 Not usually, yeah. however. Like back in the day. This, I, one's, this one's phenomenal. <laughs> I, I think bigger. especially for what they let it go for, it's it's really, really nice. I think it's smooth. you got a great caramel back end. Wow, I poured more than I thought. Um, Sponsor us. 
Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> I love everything they do. Incidentally, if you're watching this and you don't know this, I also do some whiskey reviews on my channel as well. Uh, link here. So, I'm interested. In, uh, I did not expect for this to turn into a whiskey review. All right. Let me just. Uh, <laughs> you been the distillery? No. I'm not going to be nosing this and getting all the notes and everything. Not not in this class, not, mm, not on the rocks. Suave air but No, I have, I have not been to a whiskey <laughs> distillery yet. <laughs> They've got the one over there. A um, few breweries as well, but uh, Bo Las Vegas Distillery is good. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's not bad. I've been meaning to go to that one. I also want to go to Coldcock Whiskey. So I haven't heard about it. It's in Nevada, but it's like right where you get to it's it's California. Right. <laughs> <Not> <laughs> <good>. <laughs> Anywho, getting back to gear. Are you the gear whore of the band? Miles is, for sure. Right on. Let's get you yeah. out of the way then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What do you want to talk about? Pour it up, buddy. <laughs> what are you currently rocking? Uh, well, actually, uh, uh, we're doing the EVH EL30, uh, EL34 uh, 50 watt head with a custom built cab that I made with a 112 inch Celestian Vintage 30. You made the cab? Yeah. Like all it's four sides? Right all, all four sides and everything? Actually, right? it's an enclosure it's that right. the amp head sits in. It's a uh, that's actually kind of nice. You don't have to put the amp head on top, huh? No, it just sits in there. Nice. Um, Jeff has actually inspired me to pick up a couple of different pieces of equipment here. Mm -hmm. um, so when you do a gig, though, what, what's your... That's what I'm talking about. Right, right. But I'm saying, <laughs> aside from the... What's the amp, what is the amp head, amp head, amp head that you're uh, running? Yeah. EL34 EVH 5150. Sorry, did you just say that? Yep. Sorry, this is my second whiskey. Whiskey's whiskey. Yeah. getting to you, huh? It's uh, all good. I like on, on a whiskey related note, um, the rye is a lot more complex than Jameson. Um, yeah, Jameson. There's a whole lot going I'm on. Definitely getting uh, some dried fruit. Uh, no, but I, I won't do a proper whiskey review of this, but it's good. I like it. Time minus got uh, it doesn't root suck. six drop. No, it doesn't. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> you cannot hold a candle to Viridian. Oh my God. Four pe four of us. Well, we're not pushing it. We just have a no, 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 open no. bottle there. No. Five, five of us, rather. There's a difference between. Emptying a bottle of Jameson between five people like this and emptying a bottle with shot glasses. And we did shots. Oh, Jesus. I, I, I've never been so drunk in an interview and I feel bad about the product that turned out. <laughs> You're like, oh, I got <laughs> fucked yeah. up. Ah. Because we did the performance after. They were just as drunk. Like, just oh, so sure. you know, normal good. rehearsal days and work days yeah. aren't drinking days. They're not. No. no. They should, yeah, they shouldn't be. We actually do not drink at the shows. Yeah. No, we drink at the shows. We don't drink at rehearsals. Well, well, we, we drink at after the shows. Yes. And no yeah. more than two beers before we right. play. I have learned the lesson um, to not drink before performing, or if I do, get a drink and nurse it. Yeah. But because um, when you don't remember the last three songs you sang, yeah, that's and strummed, and you're like, I hope I did good. <laughs> <laughs> that was bad, it, but it was a cover band, and we yeah. we've been playing together for like four or five years. So I was like, I was pretty confident. Yeah, yeah, yeah you good, proud eyed girl. Yeah. <laughs> You're good. So, um, gear, gear. Sorry. Yeah, that's fine. It's his fault. Uh, that's cool. No, so I mean, that's it. The EL34, uh, 50 watt head with the uh, vintage 30. That's the. Now the brand is is EL54. Or it's EVH. Oh, EVH. Okay. EVH with the EL34 <laughs> version of the 50 watt. Sorry, I'm not super up on my my uh, amps. Yeah. It's Eddie Van Halen. Yeah, Eddie Van Halen. <laughs> Yeah, it's a Fender made product. Right. It's, but when you said EVH, I got it. I was oh, just like, okay. I don't, I didn't recognize the EL. Just um, to clarify. Right. So, what do you like about that one? I don't know, man. It's got like a really good tone to it. Jeff actually turned me on to that amp. He was like, dude, I'm at Guitar Center. One day he calls me, I'm at Guitar Center. You got to check this amp out. So, I drove over there with my cabinet. We met up. I wheeled my. Wow. That's yeah, commitment. I, yeah. We're, we're pretty committed to the tone. So, I wheeled my fucking cab in there, hooked the head up. And I was blown away by it. I was like, this this is great. Well, and he he, he liked it too, and it was like, cool. I don't have one. But he, no, you don't have I mean, one. I have an EVH, but not the EO right. for me. Right. He's okay. Just, well, he's just to, yeah. soon. 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 Yeah. He's soon. Yeah. Uh, saying that for two years. Eddie's, Eddie knows his guitar stuff. <laughs> well, I mean, I got, I got some complaints on it, but it's not really the head. It's more like the fact that everybody's using this tone now. Like, it's, <laughs> right? It's all over the place. It did rightfully so. It's a good listening time. to your music. How long have you had that? Uh, Let me rephrase it. How many albums have you had that? This one. Okay. Listen. I was listening to some of the stuff from this album and uh, uh, I think the last album um, today, and I was like, okay, it sounds like they're messing with the tone a little bit. It turns out you just changed. 
<laughs> right in here. But um, but uh, I was it, a lot of your stuff sounds. You're instantly like, okay, this is something I've heard before, but different. Well, mm. that's what you said. It's com- it's comfortable, but at the same time, if there's a swell, there's something like like I I. When I, I fronted an indie rock band and I named it the suspense for that moment, like the, after the swell, the swell, and then the when the wave crashes, that's what your stuff reminds me of. Is is that mixed with some old school Metallica, but also what Metallica wished they were? <laughs> oh shit! Oh, man. That's nice. <laughs> Send all your hate mail too. Right, like <laughs> us, one of the first things we do when we start <laughs> tracking is try to search. Well, I say the first thing we do like is bite does this like a Metallica nuts. song. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we 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 look for like bite. We're we're a heavy drum and guitar influence, yeah, and uh, the guitars have to have like a really interesting bite to them. Have you guys heard of a band, a local band called? I just blank on them. I'm yes. sorry. Yes. Um, um, Josh Govang, I'm so sorry. I totally blanked on your band's name. Um, we don't know the guy. No, it's... it's. No, I'm just kidding. Tyrants by Midnight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. You want to talk about Metallica influenced? They're yeah. unabashedly. They, like, they'll come right out saying, yeah, we're totally... And you listen to stuff like, yeah, this, this is one, this is the good Metallica, yeah. Only, <laughs> only it's original. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right on. So uh, I got... I definitely... It's like a whiskey. Like I got flavors of that, but also some stuff that was definitely more of the, um, not screamo. I wouldn't call it screamo what you do. We do singing wise. You know, okay. I so wouldn't call it screamo either. It's aggressive vocals. My influence comes from like At the Gates, In Flames, Dark Tranquility, these uh, so Children of Bodom. See, and the problem is, like, one of the nice things about this channel is you just named four channel, four bands I know nothing about. Right. I'm going to check them out now because of this. Interview. Well, the reason why uh, these bands were very popular over in Europe, like Sweden, mm-hmm. during the late 90s. And if you remember, in the 90s, we didn't have a lot of metal going on. Not and that's really, when I was, yeah. like, getting into my adolescence. So when I found these bands, you know, going to, like, Borders and Barnes & Noble, you know, in Borders. The, yeah, wow. going to that section, you like wander in there and you find these bands. You get to listen to them. And I really, uh, oh, cool. I you just got a text really... message, bro, on yeah. your wife's phone. <laughs> no, that was my phone. That wasn't oh. my wife's. <laughs> you know, like I found these bands and I was Don't like, dude, this trying is to really break cool. my marriage. <laughs> 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 Sorry, um, but you, you were basically uh, that's the melodic, idea. the melodic death metal thing. Right. Uh, and that's where that comes from. So, like a lot of people compare it to that early. You took me back to Borders. Yeah. Like, it, how long has it been? God bless their soul. Yeah. <laughs> the the best closed. hot chocolate I ever had. Yeah. So <laughs> they used to do, like, the Italian cream sodas. Wasn't that the fucking place, dude? No. Dude, no, I'm telling you. They like, had a coffee. The, the Seattle's good. best coffee that they had inside the yeah. Borders on, right here in Stephanie. Yeah. I had a hot chocolate. I'm like, let me get a hot chocolate. It's like, oh, do you want this, 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 and this, this on it? I'm like, yeah. The, like... Oh my god, not just a good hot chocolate. <laughs> like, do you want diabetes? <laughs> Let me do yes. It didn't just have a good hot chocolate with whipped cream, because what are you going to do, not get whipped cream? <sighs> it came with a chocolate stick on the top that would you would, like, oh, you would sink that. down and melt. I remember that, yeah. White chocolate shavings on top. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> chocolate syrup, you're like... And and by the time you're done, you're just like I can pedal up the ice Eiffel Tower on a bicycle. Give me yeah, <laughs> this is amazing. Oh my god! And when it closed, I, that was the one thing I was sad. <laughs> Plus, they had the most comfortable chair. They were letting you sit around and read graphic comics or whatever mm-hmm. without buying them before Barnes and Nobles ever did. Barnes and Nobles used to not like they had some benches by the magazines. That about it. Oh, somebody's here. How many days? Hang on. <laughs> Who that? I left. I was, uh... Oh, Vaughn? No, the other guy. Oh, the other guy. Kal-El. Kal-El? Superman. Super- Kal-El. Kal-El. First of all, he's welcome. Or she? I don't, I don't know. Whatever pronoun they want to use. But they must have seen this and been like, oh. <laughs> okay, yeah, so. I told him it so was is, happening. Is that a roommate or something? It's brother-in-law. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. I'm he's kidding. visiting the other one. He was like, you know. Dying ten days ago, he's better now. He's gonna live. Right on. At least he's not sitting. Everybody's over, happy. At least he's not sitting over there coughing through the whole. There's like balloons, confetti, right cake, on. all kinds of shit. Right on. 
So gear. Yeah, <laughs> oh. back to gear. Pedals. Pedals. Uh, we got the Sentry. What is it? The Sentry by TC this Electronics. Go by the way. <laughs> you know. Um, how many pedals do you have? Actually, I only use the Sentry and the Tuner. That's what I have. And then, actually, is it a Kini? Sorry, is it? Well, we'll get to that. That's is is it Sentry or Century? Oh, yeah. Century. It's a get this S E N T R E Y. Okay. Yeah, this thing right here. It's by TC Electronics. Yes. This thing right here. We're yeah. using. There you go. Ding. Jeff and I both use this. What? And that's the distortion? No, this is a, uh, a noise gate. Um, so, okay. Jeff I, actually like found this thing and he was like, "Oh, this is like you should try this." And I went and bought one. And I'm like, "Oh, this is a pretty good fucking noise gate here." So it's got a switch for gate, tone print, and hiss. What is the tone print? So you can select which frequencies you want it to gate mm -hmm. and do that, which I haven't messed with at all, yeah, actually. You just go on the computer and select, you know, your Yeah, app. it's you USB. And, and it transfers it's over and it uh, pretty much... Uh -huh. I notice it doesn't do that click. That's a nice click. It's, really it's a very out, nice right? switch there. That is nice. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't... I, I... Well, no, yeah, because that click sometimes, especially when you're recording, can do that little... Little, yeah, you gotta like, push it a little harder too. It's to true it. bypass, right? Which I don't know if that's really bypass, but it sounds a lot better than right like NS2 or I like it. Color it's pretty. Pedals. So yeah, those we really don't use any pedals in the front end of the amp. We use hmm. uh, just a noise gate. Um, in my effects loop, I'm actually using a very old school uh, line six, the kidney bean. As I call it. Oh, so you you have, you do the one where you gotta like go through. Okay, I need number thirty two and sound. No, no, like, I just keep eight. it. I just well, I just right. dialed it in. Like over oh, there. Yeah. yeah, that remember that thing. Oh yeah, the yeah. XT. I actually yeah. it was one of those that made me decide to go with all pedals on my pedal board because I just can't stand having to find the tone I want. So well, well, Miles has mastered this thing oh, right. and found everything he right. ever wanted out of it. Right. The thing so, is, there's there's not even a thing to step on here. Well, no, I just run this in the effects loop. Right. Right. I, right. Here's one thing you got to remember: Jeff and I are running like a very simple fucking setup here. We're not going for which the uh, coup de grave sounds. Honestly, and tones. New, new musicians, simple is always going to be your friend. Yeah, especially when you've got like I got 15 minutes to set everything up. It's simple is your friend. Don't overcomplicate it unless you really, really need to. Well, the funny thing about that statement is, is most metal bands only use one tone the entire show. We're the only assholes who need three. So, and actually, yeah, I. <laughs> that's why when you said you don't use any like tracks or, or you know you don't sit there and uh, record it. You you play you record what you play basically. Yes, that was impressive to me. I was like, I'm hearing more than two guitarists. That's us. Yeah. yeah. We will use an intro track, mm -hmm. what's a little oh, yeah. outro, something yeah. like that. But, I mean, that but on the play, yeah. on the on the right, it is it's like something that they played. So if you hear like multiple acoustic guitars, that's all like Miles and, and Jeff. Well, that's different. That's not the whole song. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, yeah. You're not a looper. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's yeah. it's a completely different feel of life. I know we're you're not, we're not worried about incorporating. Every little niche that we did throughout the album. Right on. So, yeah, yeah, you got so what you get live right. is what you get live. What you have on the album oh, is, yeah. you know, the core idea. To me, it's the same thing as if you're going to do a cover, don't try to match it exactly. That's right. not the point. Make it your own. Yeah. Unless, of course, you're a tribute band or you're, or you're like dressing up in the costumes and everything, then you have to sound like a band. <laughs> right. um, uh, I noticed almost. Every dial is down to zero except for the output. I think it saves. Like when you turn on it, I don't use this at all. Yeah. This is not being. So used. you're strictly using the built in tone? Uh, no, it's bypassing tone. The only thing I'm using this for is effects. So what I'm using is the amp's tone. It comes in and goes out. So I don't oh, want I to. Oh, I see. Exactly. I'm so sorry. I've got I misunderstood. Okay. Well, got I figured it. out real early on that this colors the fuck out of it if you've got like some type of a amp mod or amp simulation engaged. So right. you've got to turn all that stuff off to, to use it the way I want to use it. Is just so you're using backs. You're using basically this this dial. Yeah. So I've, like, well, actually, in my <laughs> in my dial. in my effects loop, the only thing I actually use is delay mm -hmm. and modulation, and I use this to actually boost the output. So when it hits the power amp, mm -hmm. there's a little bit of a volume boost. Um, wow, sciencey. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, there's some thought that goes into it, but <laughs> yeah, there's. 
All right. Um, Jeff's the same way. He's just, got his just because these guys are growing growing old here. We, <laughs> yeah, right. We could do this for <laughs> hours. Real Oops. quick. So, so your pedals, you basically are using <coughs> the Century, the Line Six Kidney Bean. Um, are those your? Is that your four uh, pedal stomp box right there? Oh, this is just the. I mean, channel changer. Switch. Yeah, this is the foot switch that goes to the amp right here. Is it wireless? No, I oh. just don't have it plugged in. Okay, I was like, I didn't know they made those. <laughs> yeah, we ain't jamming yet. So huh? uh, we ain't jamming yet. So <laughs> all right. So um, last thing on on gear for you. Well, actually, no, not last thing. Guitars. What are you playing? I I'm using Epiphones right now. Um, nice. Get the. There was a time where metal really wasn't using a lot of Epiphones or that whole. Uh, less Paul body type thing. Okay. Yeah, they've really stepped up their game though. Yeah, they have. I'm but uh, I mean, you were seeing like flying V's and 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 the the lightning bolt shapes. And, yeah, and and all those other things. And that was more for the look of the thing. Right. But all, Jackson was coming out with a lot of stuff and um, uh, Dean. But uh, you're you're rocking. How many Epiphones do you take to a gig usually? Uh, I just take two. I got the uh, the six and the seven string. I've got the always take more than one guitar if you have it. Yeah, <laughs> always. <laughs> I've learned that lesson too. <laughs> yeah, it's dangerous. Does anybody have a B string? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then last, speaking of strings, what string do you care? Do you have a per personal like? This is my string set. This is what I use. I started using Ernie Balls about three years ago, and I never used them before then. Mm -hmm. But I tried out several different <laughs> like GHS Boomers. I tried those Blue Steel, um, the Elixirs. He Good likes balls, those. Man. Elixirs are great for acoustic. Balls. Yeah, the elixirs are great for acoustic, but the thing is, I always break the low E string. Well, and, yeah. And uh, the low E, so I always break that. So wait, I, wait, low E? Yeah, I always break the low E string. So I started... Oh, a metal pen. I started <laughs> buying Ernie Ball strings because they were cheaper than the shit I was buying, with the exception of GHS Boomers. So I just started like, buying these in bulk and using them, but I never, I haven't broken one yet, surprisingly. There you go. Um... Ernie, Ball, good Ball. job. Sponsor us. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, <laughs> do some strengths. All right, cool. Um, 20 minutes. Yeah, right. <laughs> Moving on. Let's <laughs> talk to the drummer. He's probably the other gear whore of the band, right? <laughs> probably the second, yeah. Yeah. Miles is <laughs> way too into that. All right. Now, you have an interesting... Uh, I, I, his drum set's sitting over there, and it's partly because this is a house, right? Yep. Well, what are you rocking at a show? Uh, so, I play... A pro kit that I've had for a long time. Ooh. Um, I just haven't had the money to replace it, but it's it's actually for the money. It's a really good kit. It's a Pearl Vision kit. Um, I'm Sounds using great. I'm using Minel symbols um, for the most part. I have one Zildjian ride that I use. I'm sorry, you're using what symbols? Minel. Okay, I thought you said minus. No. So you have your own symbols? No, that, that would be great. Cool. <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah, mostly Minel. I have uh, one ride that's Zildjian. Uh, I'm using Axis pedals. I use foot blaster triggers. I'm using, um, I use a module for our samples. It's a Roland SPDSX uh, module, which also runs my triggers. Um, what else? Uh, Vic Firth drumsticks. Every once in a while, I'll switch them up to, uh, to something else. Do you use any sort of gorilla snot or any of that stuff? I do. I have a big problem. Like my hands sweat a lot. So if you, you'll, if you see me at a show, I either have, uh, grip wax on my hand, or I'll use, or you'll see like my fingers are all taped. Um, so don't shake his hand before a show. <laughs> no, no, I have, I have a, a big problem with that because you're not the, you're, we're you're, doing like, there's a lot of drummers that have that problem. We're doing like thrashy stuff or stuff that like just takes a ton of movement or like a ton of fills. Mm -hmm. My hands, I don't know what it is about my hands, man. They get so sweaty. So I either have tape on the, on the drumsticks or both like the, the grip wax. Um, I'm a big fan of that stuff. It actually works really well. See, when I was younger, I used I, I would see drummers with like tape on their fingers. Yeah, and I would think, oh, that's to protect their finger. No, it's to keep hold of the stick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it does. It does initially help with blisters. After you play for a while, you get used to that yeah. kind of stuff. This is where you get the. I'm yeah. actually taking drum lessons with my uh, my, my drummer right on. from my jazz band. And, um, but uh, I'm not to the point where I have to worry about blisters. So certainly yeah. not. Yeah. We're still. I'm just learning. Like you know. Right, the but the base stuff. Yeah, um, but no, that that's so, that's interesting that you say that that's what the um that, that's you're you're doing both. Sometimes I do both. Yeah, it just depends on um, how sweaty you're feeling. How like sometimes <laughs> I you know 
I'm like, all right, tape is good enough, and I'll just do the tape, or it just depends on how I'm feeling. It, it is important, uh, if you're a new drummer, it's important to hold on to your sticks. <laughs> because, yeah. um, not, not throwing any names out there, but I was, I was actually, uh, we were, for whatever reason, I, I landed on Fox, uh, it was the More Fox show, where like, they're highlighting, here's a local band, and you get to do a song. Not the whole song, but you get to do a song. And I'm playing a song, and suddenly a drumstick hits me in the back. Yeah. Fortunately, they were done. Or it was the back of the leg, sorry. They were done, like, they they'd already cut. I was like, you had one song. <laughs> one song to hold on to. Yeah. <laughs> and the drumstick went flying. People ask me that, too. Like, if you're watching this, I miss you. I've never been hit by you, they're like, actually. They're, people ask me that stuff, like, do you ever drop sticks? It's like, yeah. I, I, oh, yeah, no. You don't oh, hear it when this guy drops sticks. Drops yeah, sticks. that's why the, that's why the drone stick bag right. was invented. Was right it's there. not yeah. fucking noticed. It's, it's not a break. stick. Yeah, no yeah, clue yeah. that he did. Yeah. Want to break? Or or the, you know, piece of wood would go flying. Oh, yeah. Have, oh, that always happens. Yeah. Always have like a replacement right next to me because like one to snap in half mm-hmm. or, it, or it fall off my hand. It's not a stick bag. It's a quiver. Yeah. Right. Just grab another one. and Yep. Um, I'm just grateful I don't have like ninja the, death stars flying around me yeah, when you're playing. Oh, jeez. I uh, I going back to the your collateral video. I was impressed. Like I was watching. I'm listening to what you're playing, but from the, the waist up, you are so textbook. Just like you're you're yeah. they're playing. Yeah, I can see your hands are moving fast, but you are not doing the Tommy Lee or whatever. You know, it's kind of hard to do that if you're playing. For me, at least, some dudes do that. Yeah. Are you playing thirty seconds? On that song? Yeah. 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 I was right. sitting there going like... That song's like 216 or something. He is not matching up to what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, I think it's 216, yeah. Yeah. That specific song. And I think right. you were so just too cool for the room on that video. It was like, whatever, man. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? I wasn't even in that video. You're in that video. You're... <laughs> You're in that video. What video, man? We do. There's not a video? Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so this video is yeah. all miles in his feet. There ain't no video. <laughs> Um, Who's talking shit? Right, and uh, and, and James Corbett here. <laughs> <laughs> Chad Hetfield. Chad, <laughs> God damn! You should, you should wear it. Get a shirt, yes. dude. Yes, I'm gonna I give you a black printed shirt. You should white actually lettering. Just Chad like, Hetfield <laughs> on the back. Holy says, fuck! On the back it says, "Yes, I'm him." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm that guy. <laughs> I'm um, that guy you think I am. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to grow and my yes, beard you out. It's pretty well. happy they'll call me Keanu Reeves. Right. Fuck. That would be the best one yet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would pay good money to see Keanu Reeves look like you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jeff, what would be gear now that we're like half hour into this? <laughs> uh, I'm playing EBH also. Uh, Sounds like you're playing a game. I'm playing EBH. Yeah. 19. It's a 100 watt <laughs> amp, though. He's got the 50 out of 100 watt. Um, loser. <laughs> no, I think it's a little, it's, I mean, yeah, it's, it's got a lot of but, power. Well, you, you, you do more of the leads, right? Yeah. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah, I have a, um, a volume booster also that for when the uh, leads come in, I hit a, you know, mm-hmm. next loop pedal and then um, it boosts uh, the lead up so you can actually hear it. Right on. So now, you, what, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Are you, all, what, what guitar are you playing? Um... This like, guy, I'm, I'm, the guy. Guy. I'm the guitar at a show. Shit. This fucking guy is <laughs> more guitar. I'm gonna show. take a right. piss. Yeah, right. that's yeah. what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm right. taking a piss while this guy's playing guitar. We're gonna take. We're gonna take. I'll take the turn. Take the turn. Take the turn. Take the turn. Take the we're back. Now that everybody's relieved themselves, we were talking about your guitars that made everybody lose their crap. <laughs> How many guitars do you have? I have twenty guitars. You win. <laughs> he yeah. rounded down. <laughs> down. Yeah. Okay. Well, at a show, do you just uh, go mean, through them all, or is it from the show? Really? <laughs> <laughs> what do you? It's a metal. When do you have time to yeah, go no, through no, them all? Anyway, sorry. No, seriously. How many does it take to show? Just um, three. Three, but we have we have a couple different tunings for our songs. So these guys. Yeah. That, all right. That band. <laughs> no. But um, I, I also uh, <laughs> I have uh, Floyd Rose that I play, so I can't change the tunings. Uh, Floyd Floyd Rose is a, is so, one of those pros and cons kind of thing. So Max three guitars. You play are, are all your guitars Floyd Rose? The ones you play in the show? I like I just that's why I prefer. Is that term yeah, Floyd so Rose you use live. Yeah. All right. What is what is your go to guitar for majority of your songs? Ooh. Do you have one? Um, 
No. <laughs> well, yeah, they're all. No, you, I, I'm ready to see this. You, you, so it's, for me, it's between it's, two. I bring a, a certain amount here, but when I'm home, I have, I have options. I can just. Right. I have. Just depends on what mood I'm it in. It sounds like so you are <laughs> you you are two guitars. <laughs> what uh, Pete Townsend is to pedals. <laughs> have you seen his pedal collections? Like, not really. I take up this table. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Um, so, for for minus, I usually play Schechter. Thank you. There you go. We got a brand. All right. So that's. I mean, <laughs> we're trying to like tour for a while. I'm doing like tour. Yeah, it just depends. I'm trying to shift it. Uh, but I, I want to create one one brand that way. Okay. You know. Now this is interesting to me. What is it about this brand or brands that you like for what you do? Is it the the, the shape of the body? It's, the way it, no, it's more. It's more like the. Because um, I mean, where it's electric, there's only so much tone. The the body. Yeah, so. it's more the features on it. I think for the price point, it you get a lot in it. Okay, I've heard good things about Schecter. Yeah. I don't know the Legator. Legator is just, I mean, they're good. They're okay too. It's more of a um, kind of more private brand kind of thing. They're not really, you know. They're kind of a new company. Yeah. Probably why I haven't they're heard. They're very new. Yeah, yeah but, yeah, but it's still yeah, you know how it is. It takes yeah. like 10 years to actually yeah. gain a foothold. You know, Les Paul actually never learned to play guitar. Really? He I know he built a lot of Les shit. Paul didn't know how to play guitar. Yeah. I just thought that was one of those weird little things, but uh, anyway, I, I digress. Pedals. How crazy are you on pedals? Um, <laughs> no, I'm not too crazy on the pedals. Pretty simple, like like Miles. Just um, just a noise gate in the front, and a tuner. Same that one. Sponsors. And then uh, right. an effects is a delay pedal for my lead channel. Okay. It's an MXR carbon copy and a um, and an MXR EQ to boost the um, the actual channel of the lead. I haven't heard of the carbon copy for a delay. Um, how crazy can you get with the delay? It's pretty moderate, I think. Yeah, yeah I like the simple, like, you know, if you're going for crazy... Uh, um, it's a real... Ambient sounds or whatever you want to call it. Like, it's probably not right. that, that pedal, but it's very... It's natural to me. I don't know if you got that it's out a real, of it, but... Well, it's an analog delay. It's real grassroots, just kind of dull. It, it does... I don't want to get too crazy with it. I just want a little bit of... Uh, it adds flavor. flavor. Yeah, a little bit of flavor. It's the salt and pepper. Yeah. Yeah, All right, cool. that's exactly what it Salt does. Salt bay. <laughs> it's easy to wear. It's got three three knobs, so it's like... Yeah. So, it's really easy. Never have enough knobs. All right. <laughs> uh, strings? Uh, elixir. Night and day right there. All right, cool. On to the bass. Sl slash low three. The low motherfuckers! So, uh, for the rig, I run Mark bass. Cabs and head. That's right. I saw a thing where you were like, hey... It's got my name on it. Has nothing to do with that. Before I uh, bought into this company, I researched for about three years, and they spent um, about 10 to 15 years working with bassists on the uh, tone, sound, what they wanted, and everything like that. They spent a lot of time before they came out with their initial line, and then I got into them a little bit later. But what's funny, as far as this town, I was one of the first people to ever have it. Right on. What do you like about it compared to, say, a Fender or, you know, one of the other more popular brands? Honestly, the tone, the sound, the low end, to me, everything is great and it's extremely warm. It's got a very, very, very warm sound. I run a 800-watt uh, um, head with a tube preamp in it. Okay. And for me it's it's like night and day compared to a lot of other things um i really like it but i also am a fan of ampeg like um you know there's a difference between um having anything with tubes and then solid state right um the mark based solid state is like really legit it's it's on point that's probably where i'm going to go to next so i don't have to worry about any type of tubes or anything mm -hmm. else like that, but it's a very fat, very warm feeling sound. I'm gonna have to listen. I'm gonna have to go back and listen with an ear to the bass. The uh, the cabinets mm -hmm. are ridiculous, and for one thing, what's it. great about the company yeah. is like most of the gear is lightweight. It's lightweight. oh, that's weight. for bass. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah, I, I that's, remember. That's everything. I only run a two ten and a fifteen mm -hmm. with what I have. Um, each one of the cabinets is four hundred watt. Uh, and to me, it's to me, it's everything. I do not want to bring around a fridge. For the record, I don't want to carry around. Base a actually does better on solid state. Solid state, yeah, like yeah. like literally. You said it had the tube preamp, and I, it, my brain said, 
I don't remember ever hearing two in a bass amp. No, no. And except way back you know, in the old it, days. It has this with the two preamp, it has this very classic sound. Yeah, it's good. But you cool. also can get this very dirty solid state sound that's like really just punchy clean. Right. But I think a lot of fat and warmth and tone comes out of that preamp. Um, at the same time, it's one of the things you have to watch because it does have that tube and the way that it's actually uh, incorporated into that head, those tubes can go out and they are pricey and aggravating to change out. That is So if you are going to go mark base, I will tell you to go solid state the whole way. Go solid state. You're going to save yourself a right. little, little aggravation. Um, I think that's honestly for whether you play bass or not, any amplifier or amp head, if you, unless you have money to burn, exactly. don't go, don't go tubes because you just, it's eventually you're going to have to, it is money to burn. It. And, and like, as far as bass, like there's, there's subtle nuances. Nine times out of 10, you're going to line out into the house rig and they're going to do whatever they want to do to your sound. Right. That's really what it's going to be. So that right there, that's great for tracking and recording. As right. far as live sound, um, you're at their mercy. Right. And in, so, and when you're recording, the emulators nowadays, the patches, can make you sound like you've got a tube. Yeah. Like with everything that you have in the plugins nowadays, you can recreate or create your own sound in any way that you so choose. Yeah. So there's really no point in investing in something like that when you know that you're going to have to have the upkeep on it or replace the entire unit. Right. Which I have. Um, and it sucks. Yeah, it's, it, it can be frustrating, but, you know, at the same time, you know, I, I still love the head and I, I, I love what I use. And then um, I have a backup head, which is an acoustic, but that's, it, it has great sounds, great features and everything like that. An acoustic, acoustic brand? Acoustic brand. I'm not familiar with that for bass. Um, I'm they not have a lot of really that. good, solid products and everything like that. I just got a uh, very low wattage, simple. So it's like small. here compared to Mark. Yeah. Okay. As, as, as far as tone and everything, I, I, I think so. I can recreate most of what I do out of it. But um, other than that, I run the uh, Mark Bass compressor, the distortion pedal, uh, Crybaby Bass Wall, and then uh, Ibanez and Spectre Bass. Nice. Well. Do you use the Watt a lot? Yeah, I do. Hmm. I actually do. I'm it. definitely gonna have to go back and listen to your bass hey, on the on the on your tracks because he so uses it live. Here's the thing: he I use that more live for feel and everything sure. like that. Um, there's so much that we have going on as far as the record and everything like that, mm -hmm. and as far as what we track that it's not completely necessary, but it does create a very cool feeling and oh, yeah. live setting you, and everything like that. Yeah. I've never felt the need and anything that we've tried to be like, okay, we should include the wah here. I really like to use it for swells and feels and everything like that between things. It is ideally and, suited for swells. And yeah. other stuff like that. For, for me, it's just something that uh, you can do live that's completely different than right. what you're getting in the album feel. Uh, so you take something home that's completely and, different. And see, viewers, this is what makes a really great band is when you're thinking about that stuff where you're like, you're not saying, well, I'm going to do a bass solo and I want, I want wah on it. You're thinking for this song at this point, I want to swell and then I'll go back to, you know, no, no wah. Exactly. But if you, but without it, a fan would notice and, and would be like, oh, yeah, that's the whole difference yeah. between what's what's recorded and what's live. Right. Well, and it, like it always that. goes back to vibe. Yeah, yeah so everything goes feel. back to feel, yeah. vibe. Like, what does it need? Um, there's a lot of discussion that happens on the production end of it. That, like, what does this need? You know, more than right. Uh, you know, like, hey, what do I want to do? We go, hey, I want to do this. Then we go, well, what does it actually need, though? It's like it's great that that's yeah. How that's do we get? Idea, how do we get but, that? You know, maybe what if we took away from it? Because right. it's huge. So, yeah, and that's uh, another huge thing is a successful or a, a really tight band will have those conversations where it'd be like, "No, you're stupid. That's a dumb idea." Or you know, yeah, well, let's nice. make that happen. You'll have an idea yeah. and have a and and go to track something like that, and then you're like, "I was wrong." Okay, then um, <laughs> that's me. Well, no, we'll, we'll sit there and do something, have a completely complete uh, body of work, and then start. 
out of nowhere, somebody gets a crazy notion, and then you run with it, and then an entire piece of music, an entire mm-hmm. movement, completely changes. I I had that happen. Yeah. And the next thing you know, you're like, okay, so we kind of did this and we tracked it. What do you think? And then next thing you know, everybody's wheels are turning. And the real question comes. The next thing you know, you end up with a with a better piece of work than than what you had to begin with. The real fun comes when you're like, wait, how do we do this live now? I've got a track on on my uh, second album where, for whatever reason, we just kept recording my guitar solo on this one song seven times, and every time I did something different, and I was like, what does it sound like if we play them all together? And it worked. Hmm. Yeah, like a few little tweaks here and there, but it, and I'm like, I'm never gonna be able to repli- like, I'm never gonna be able to you know replicate this. But it's okay. Album is album. I just learned exactly. And I had that whole existential crisis of, well, I want to be able to. Re-. And finally, uh, my bass player, who also was, he, he owns Redstone Studios, um, and uh, he engineered, did the whole thing. He even played the drum set on because he's a better drummer than I am. Uh, but I, I, I did all the instruments, and, and I was telling him like. How how do I, you know, I don't want to do something that I can't replicate live. And he said, recording should be your best work. That should be your, the best, unless it's a live recording, obviously. But it should be your best representation of what you can do. And then you worry about the live show. And that's that stuck with me. I was like, yeah, why would I want to put out something that's just like, oh, that's the best I could do by myself. When I can right. put out something that's better. Because I can always get more guitar players. <laughs> well... I think when it comes to live stuff, you should set the bar with your recording and then try to meet or exceed that. Exactly. And never then, be under that. Yeah. And there's been, I mean, how many, how many times have we all heard those concept albums or something where you're like, they play maybe two songs when they play live of that album because there's like cows moving and stuff, you know? There's just no way that they can do it without uh, samples or, or tracks or something. Right. right. Um, finishing up your gear. You mentioned your pedals. Mm-hmm. No, uh, no big muff or any of that stuff. No, I, I use the uh, Mark Bass Distortion and the uh, Crybaby Cry One yeah. and the I mean, uh, Cry Mark Bass Compressor. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, strings. Uh, Ernie Balls. Power Slinkies. Power uh, Slinkies. Cobalts. Yeah, and I hear that from a lot of bass players. Uh, either I hear I, whatever I can afford, or I hear Ernie Balls. Okay, so like you pay for them, mm-hmm. but. They last, right? They last. Bass they have a expensive. great bite to them, like this amazing, just kong, kong, kong sound that really cuts through. Mm-hmm. And there's there's just something about them. They're they're amazing strings. They sound. I mean, they sound good. Um, whether they're the best thing you can use for metal. Period. Period. You heard it here. Right, I'll say that to the camera. <laughs> yeah, hurry ball, cobalts, power slinkies, bass. Sponsor. Best thing for metal. Yeah. Um, any dream gear? Any gear you're lusting after? Any, any Wayne's World moment, like, soon you'll be mine? We'll start with drums. Oh, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Um, Don't let me down, if bro. I could, if I could pick a drum kit, it'd probably be... Solid gold! Just kidding. Probably be a Hatama kit. Um, like a Tama BB kit's pretty awesome, but there's, I mean, honestly, I could put together like three or four kits that would be my 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 dream kit. But yeah. for live playing and for metal, probably be Tama. Yeah. Is there um, one piece of gear that you're like, I really want that, but I can't afford it? I want to try. I'm dying to try these pedals, these drum bass drum pedals called called uh, Charchi Copitos. They're they're excuse me Polish. <laughs> Never heard of them. <laughs> That's a uh, Polish company, but um, Polish. I they don't sell in the states. Huh. They're they're pretty pricey and you have to buy them. How pricey? They'll range probably around thirteen hundred, fourteen hundred. Come buy out that man. Um, yeah, but you can't. That's a kit. There's a. He's, that's that's great. Yeah. There's <laughs> there's some sort of like patent thing happening between them and Trick because I think Trick pedals, <coughs> Trick pedals have like sort of a similar oh, te- technology so. happening with I believe the the spring tension and and that'll that's not even counting shipping. Yeah, so you gotta, you can only get them overseas. You can get them in Canada and you can get them in South America and Europe, but you can't get them here. Wow. Well, Canada's, I mean, that's not that far. Yeah, but I'd have to have them shipped there and then shipped to me, and it's just take, like, take Canadian. It out, get some syrup. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> I might one of, the, one of these days. All right, so, and that was from where? 
I believe they're a Polish company. Polish kick yeah, pedals. Spoiled. Yeah, bass drum. Bass <laughs> drum I mean, you're, you've taken niche and on, too. And on those, <laughs> even, like that's kind of a leap for me because I I don't even know if if they are good. I just know that a ton of drummers I follow that I love mm -hmm. use that pedal. So you can't be. You can't. There's no way. There must be a reason. There's no way they're bad. You haven't heard. heard you haven't seen yes. any like YouTube uh, uh, reviews of them or anything. Oh, see, yeah, I've seen. Okay, quite a few. Yeah, but I've never like put my feet on. Them. I've never even seen them in person. So that's the that's that one is of those, true. Like, you may play them and be like, yeah. Oh God, it's possible. It's just like some people like bullet, like rye whiskey. Yeah, yeah. And other people, yeah. or you know, but that's like a piece of gear that I'm dying to try. That's just a question mark for me right now. Noise. Uh, exactly. And the name of that again was yes, Charchi Copito. Gesundheit. So, yeah, I'm Batman. <laughs> all right. Yeah, you are. <laughs> so, 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 uh, how about you, Dream Gear? Uh, a, uh, a custom minus mark edition mark base. I'm yeah. just kidding. There you go. <laughs> hey, let's do Honestly, it. Honestly, you know, as far as heads and amps or whatever, I can make anything work. Uh, you might as well finish. Man. Seriously, for me, well, I get twenty-five thousand dollar plus Michael <laughs> Tobias designs Why the five hell? string base. Now you currently play four string, five. Five. Well, you play five. I play five. So you want another five? Got it. Yeah, I can't use a four string for anything we do. It's um, a waste of time. I, it, I might as well slap my dick against my forehead. It, it's, not, it's like <laughs> this fucking guy. Man. It's like oh, it's pointless. Gosh. Here, have some more. <laughs> it's, it's pointless. It's pointless. I can't yeah. do anything that we do with a four string. Now, have you thought about going to like six, seven, or more strings? Um, for me, we don't do anything that's like uh, we don't do any like fusion or anything like that for me to have a six string right. or a seven string with what we do is pointless right it's completely pointless we are so down tuned oh like, yeah the down tuning does and, kind of eliminate the need and for if you oh, look at a lot of what we do as shot. far as fret spread and playing and everything like that yeah I'd be playing on a fucking two by four <laughs> just remember this he doesn't know it yet but he'll probably need it Ooh, Ooh, you say that, but no, no, no. no. There, <laughs> That's the joy of original music, folks. <laughs> there's no, for me, there's yeah, no yeah. sense. There's no sense in that, right? Because it's going to be such. So high in the register, and that's right. when you start getting frequency range crosses and everything like that. Yeah, and we don't want that. There's so it's much the, heavy sick guitar work going on. See that, and okay. I don't need to jump into their register at the same time. You know, or mine. <laughs> right, exactly. right, exactly. Suddenly, no. it's a four kick the, pedal. The thing is, <laughs> right. one of the tricks to EQing and doing everything like that is making Sorry, sure that the bass doesn't eat up the bass drum. Likewise, that's annoying. That oh, I'm not in their yeah, frequency that has range, been a thing. and I'm so not annoying. cutting into what they're doing. And I've heard I've away seen shows where they're away from the riffs. Yeah. There's there's a fine medium, mm -hmm. and I for think me to get into a six and seven string bass with what we do, right. we're not doing jazz fusion. So there's no fucking need for it. There's Spiral no genre. need for it. It's a waste of time. I dating myself. Waste uh, of time. I agree with you. And there's, you know, sound engineers get a lot of stick at, at, at shows where it's not their fault. They're making everybody the best they can. Yeah. Well, yeah. They're doing like but standard but, rock. But this stuff. kind of, what you're talking about of frequency and, and, and pitch yeah. Yeah. pollution yeah. is happening. And, you know, it's not it's not like I'm sitting here playing a stick. <laughs> right. It's playing a stick. There. There's a band in town called Revolta that I'm, um, we're trying to get them on the show schedule-wise. They're, but they're a three piece, and the music they play totally fits this. Their bass player has a nine string bass. I think it's nine, it might be ten. And it, and I, I remember. It's no longer a bass. It's, it's more like a, a uh, cross fusion. I mean, but you know what, though? Higher, right? The thing the is, the, higher, yeah, like, the thing is, it's, it's a Chapman stick. The, the What's thing, the point in that no, shit? The thing is, their music and what he does with it, it totally fits. It allows him to actually do that. He doesn't get like bass solos all the time or anything. It's just, he, suddenly you're hearing a note, you're like, that's because they 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 have lazy guitar players. That's why. no, they yeah, have, yeah. The, the, oh. they, they're a three piece. The front man is the guitarist, and you no. and as I've been that, and when you're doing all the guitar, you suddenly realize I'm limited on what I can do. That isn't like as soon as you start soloing, your rhythm drops out. Your rhythm guitar. I remember playing the House of Blues actually, and I was I was like, yes, I'm soloing, and everybody's loving it. And oh, I gotta go back to the pedals because <laughs> because the chorus is coming. Yeah, yeah, and, and having extra bass strings allows that that when you drop out, it allows that extra. That's just part thing. of the job, though. I know, but I'm saying, I, I'm just saying, your music, I agree. 
five strings max. No, no, that's 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 all I need. To Everything else is a job done. Yeah. Anything like that, I'm not going to uh, jump in that register because when you have two great guitarists that are doing what they're doing, there's no nice. need for me to cross into what they're doing and and take away. Yeah, there's things where I'm like, okay, I do this added thing, and yeah, it's upper register and everything like that, but it doesn't. It, it's 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 not stepping on the toes of what they're doing. It mm -hmm. creates this to create a moment, and then I <clears throat> drop right back into the bottom end to to carry carry that low point. And I mean, we have a a pretty interesting tuning. You know, we have a couple of them. right, and you know, it's it's low, it's green, it's got bite, it's got teeth. But at the same time, the guitars there's there's especially when you guys are doing the harmon the um. Not harmonics, harmonies. 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 Thank you. harmonics Jesus. The har the harmonies, when you're doing the harmony playing, it totally f it it's you're sitting right there in the pocket and suddenly there's this and it's all very neat. That was the word that popped to mind when I was listening to your music. It's like it's very neat. It's not sloppy metal. No, we want it clean. We yeah, want it's very, very clean. clean. We want anything and everything that we do to be right. I can listen to any five seconds. Audible. Hear what everybody's doing. You know, and and, and that's the I personally I enjoy that. Um, it's one of the reasons, one of the things I like about those other bands I've mentioned in this show, uh, Revolta and Tyrants by Night, is that it's very neat, it's very clean. You can hear like, they put thought into it as well. Just like you, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, moving on, <laughs> Dream Gear. Oh me? No, I've got everything I need. I'm good. All right, it happens occasionally. It happens <laughs> occasionally. How about you, no, I spoil myself. How about you? Twenty you plus step guitar. Up those Apple to Gibsons. That's about it. No, not even that. Like, no, no. I'm I'm very uh, utilitarian with everything. Don't want some signature guitars. Put on workshops. I don't have the ego for it. <laughs> Honestly, to... funny joke, old joke. Bands playing, places packed. There's agents in the back row. They're gonna get signed. Right. This is like you know, they're they're rocking out in the so ninety two. It's the singer's thinking, this is awesome. Oh, we're gonna I'm gonna be rich. We're gonna do all the drugs I want. I'm gonna bang all the girls I want. The lead guitar singer, this is great. Fucking goals, man. Right? <laughs> the, the lead singer's thinking, this is awesome. I'm going to have my own signature series of guitars. I'm going to like put on workshops, and I'm going to be famous rock god. The drummer's thinking, this is great. I'm going to buy all the gear I want. I have all the kits and, and everything. And the bass player's thinking, E-A-D-G-E. -E <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's totally. That's, yeah. that's total truth. That's, that's total, total truth. truth. <laughs> that's, Bass we're players, in such a fucking crazy tuning. I don't even know what the fuck we're playing. The bass though. players are always the coolest guy in the room. If you That's see a band with, like if you see a band with like Flea, you know, like a crazy, crazy bass player, they're not. There's something else going on with that bass player. <laughs> um, I've heard stories about Flea, but anyway, Jeff, Mister Multi Multi Deck Scores of Guitars, Dream Gear. Oh, I'd <laughs> <laughs> go, I want to get, I would probably, I, yeah, like more USA made guitars. Okay. Uh, I just, I, do you have any, that. how do you feel about Fender Strat USA? No, I just don't play Fender. No. I, I appreciate them. I think That's they're right. great guitars. I just, I just, just he's got a backpedal. I would love them. Not for what we do. Send them for what we do. They I would love to have one of these. Yeah. Anytime I see like a, a strat body. It doesn't have to be a strat, it could be a silver tone or whatever. But uh, anytime I see that type of guitar in a metal band, I'm always like, you settled. You know, you settled, because that's not this it's not really the not like body the shape, type. It's, it's, more the, the, shape. it's the tone, it's, it's the sound. Well, no, uh, that's what I meant. But when I see that, that body, it's generally that type of tone. Right. Thing. I would so, say I would say for that. It's more the playability of the, I mean, Fender, I mean, they're not, what are they, 21 frets? Right. Um, I mean, I, I play 20, uh, 24, so that's one thing. Right, they've got that. Yeah, yeah I got half two two, um, The single the, coil pickups just don't go with. The neck's got a really you know, tight. But I love it. I would love to play it because I like playing all different kinds of styles. Yeah, if somebody gave you a Fender Strat American, uh, you'd be like, okay. Yeah, I'd take it. Because they're not, they're not that cheap. <laughs> he'd wreck it. He'd, he'd completely wreck it. <laughs> I would it. love to try a Japanese Fender and uh, uh, Strat. Well, a 25 three quarter scale. Oh yeah, because if the guitar's yeah. not good, the guy that the luthier's got to kill scale, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> fucking hell! <laughs> <laughs> so you're doing the Fender scale? Oh man, I don't the Fender scale. take this That's away! What it is. <laughs> yeah, for a Fender? Yeah, I'm doing twenty four oh. three quarter. You're doing. I misspoke earlier, so you're doing twenty five and a half. That's a Fender scale. Okay, so we know who the gear geeks are. Yeah, I think you got twenty four or twenty five. 
Hi. Hi, how you doing? We're back. Welcome We're back. back. <laughs> back about... Welcome back. Welcome to this old booze house. Right. About, yeah. <laughs> so, um, your, one, your, your dream gear is more. Yeah, I guess... Variety is the spice of life. For you, it's more. Is that it? <laughs> Variety is the spice of life. Obviously. I just, I like, I strive, I like higher He end likes stuff. his gear the way he likes his women. Yeah. More. More. I like <laughs> high end stuff, so it's like, I, just, I like my women like I like my coffee, bitter and murky. <laughs> yeah. You know there's more. Yeah, no, I gotta watch it. You live We gotta here. play later. You live here. You, you gotta play later. Drive. You gotta play All right. later. Last question. You made it. Oh. Yeah. Let's pretend we're talking to new musicians. We're going to skip the obvious things like change your strings all the time, you know. Yeah. What is one piece of maintenance tip, whether it's about yourself or about your gear? Uh, what is one piece of advice you would give a new musician? And that's your, that's your new musician right there. Anybody? Whatever lady, anybody. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> if you have multiples, go for it. Hold on. No, one piece of advice, you can't count on anybody. If you want to do it, you got to do it yourself. Yes. Ooh, that's it. Period. Yes. If you want, if you have a vision, if you have an idea, spearhead it, go for it, do it, show it to people, yes. share it, don't hide it, don't let them influence you. Just yeah. Don't go. be afraid to promote yourself. Don't it, ever it, let it, anyone even if tell you it can't be done. No. no matter what you have to say, if you don't like something, just be honest. People love honesty. They don't. They don't like pretentious. They don't like bullshit. Mm -hmm. Be honest. Take a drink. <laughs> Shut up and drink. <laughs> Shut up and sing. Oh, <laughs> um, that's my advice. And honestly, that that's the first time anybody's ever said that. Everybody's always worried about like, well, you want to do this with your gear, blah blah blah, or you know, make sure you take care of yourself. No. Do what you do. Be honest with people about who you are and what you do, and. You'll, the bright the people will find you that, that like what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're always going to find haters no matter what. Yeah. Don't we accept limitations. Yeah. Don't let anybody tell you something can't be done a certain people way. People are scared because they don't you want can to prove be rejected. Them wrong and yep. We've done it. Trust me. You ever seen YouTube comment sections? Whew. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. No, I have. I see it all yeah. the time. People are haters. People are haters because they're scared. Yep. If you got the balls to say something, say it. Yep. I, I think the best comeback ever is. Why don't you do it? You know? Yeah. Are you in show business? Get the fuck off the stage. Like one of the best pieces of advice uh, anybody's ever given me is as long as it doesn't ca cause harm to self or others, right? it's good. That's what I, I have. I have a 12 year old daughter and I, I tell her the same thing. It's like, we will support you in whatever you want to do as long as it doesn't hurt you or hurt other people or break right. the law. Right. This jail sucks. Right. And they're gonna That's it. Cause yeah. harm to self or others. No. Okay, good. Good right. idea. Go for it. Yep. Say what you want to say. So next, that's what music is about. Uh, anybody? Anybody? Just advice in general. What? Are, yeah, you're talking to a new musician. Somebody who's like, "Oh man, how do I get to be like you?" I mean, the <laughs> Don't. most the most, <laughs> the most cliche thing to say is just to practice. But I feel like a lot of people. The one thing I wish I was told when I was learning music or trying to get to where I want to be is that's better. I need to rephrase that question in the future. What, like, what's one thing you would... Generally, what musicians tend to do is they they learn how to play something cool, and then they just kind of go back to that, you know, and then they waste a lot of time when their mm -hmm. practice time just kind of being cool. Yep. Instead of practicing, and I did a I did a ton of that. It's like I can play this song now. Yep. Yeah. And I was happy that I could play that song, but instead of pushing further, you sooner yeah. I kind of would stay there, you know. And I wish in my playing, somebody had told me, hey, you know, like. You can do this cool thing now, but like, there's more, you know. Just Get out of always, your zone. always yeah. push. If you're playing, if you're practicing, and you sound cool, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's true. Yes. If you're not fucking it up, so you're not trying hard. That's enough. the one thing yeah. I would say is, is practice, but practice with a purpose of, of truly getting to that next level. And then once you reach that, go for the next because there's always next. You know, no one's mm -hmm. even the people I look up to are like looking up to other people. So you know, Neil Peart was taking lessons from somebody when he was like his 40s or 50s there's always something man like music yeah. music's kind of circular I, i've learned you know you everyone's learning from somebody and, and you always kind of have to push your limits to to get to where you want to yeah. be so can you imagine being that drum teacher trying to that you, you want that would me be, to teach you that would be nuts yeah 
Well, yeah, I, I it was uh, I forget he he was one of those, he realized like you know I never learned the like the fundamentals right and he wanted to see what he had missed yeah and I know happens man you I just can't even fathom that like that's like Eddie better come to you and be like hey can you teach me like you know how to play I don't know two octaves uh, yeah <laughs> yeah or a chromatic scale yeah that, there you go um if who either of you advice pretty much what they or what you wish you i really like that i'm going to use that what you wish you had been told when you were starting out in music uh, it's kind of... don't do it I'm just kidding Ugh. i mean what it's i you're gonna be broke yeah it's a trap yeah it's a trap no you're gonna it's be love. broke it's love it's not about yeah. the career it's don't, not about don't it. try to make money at it Tr because you'll make be art, don't try to make money. I will say this for my wife: if the art is good, money will follow. My wife never watches my hope. videos, but if, you hope. if you're watching this video, honey, I thank you because she told me when I first started doing music in this town, especially in Vegas, especially in Vegas, it's so oversaturated with musicians. I mean, you know, you can play for free anytime, anywhere you want. Um, she told me, don't try to make a living out of it. Don't try to make a business out of it. You're going to be so miserable. Like have the day job and then well, do the making, making making live a in a box. <laughs> yeah, making a business out of anything is a pain in the ass. Yeah, yeah. well, um, I, 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 I cannot tell you how nice it is. To, I have my job. I like my job. And then when I'm done, I'm done. And I come home and I'm like, okay, now I'm going to focus on my family. And then I'll focus <laughs> on the hobby, which is room six. I would love this to make enough money to where I can quit my job. Link Patreon. Yes, buy some CDs. Um, I would I love that. Find mine it's somewhere. But <laughs> yeah, like, but considering that I started this in like April of 2019, I feel like I'm doing okay, you know. Yeah. But you know, make sure you click subscribe. Um, but yeah, uh, it, it's so many people get they they look at the the famous, the the famous and the supposedly rich, and they think I want to be that. No, you don't. You want to be good at what you do. Yeah. Well, they, a lot of people think fame equals rich, and yeah. that's not the that's truth. Not the case at yeah. all. I actually, so. I, I reached a point a few years ago where I was like, you know, I'm I know enough musicians in this town that if I want to be on stage singing a song tonight, I can. I, I can go, I can go be singing tonight if I want. It doesn't do anything for me except get my yayas out, as the Stones said. But right. it doesn't do anything to like further my career right. or any of that stuff, and. That's when it hurt me. It hit me like, okay, maybe I need to support the local scene instead of worrying about me. And and that's the thing too. Sometimes you change direction. Yeah, and and honestly, that that was the what started the road towards Room Six. I I realized, hey, local musicians, I love you, but you don't promote yourselves that well. And there really was nobody doing much on YouTube at all saying, here's the local scene. Here's what's going on. Right. And I was really surprised by that. Um, I wish I would thought of a better name than Room 6 because... No, I like, like Room 6. It's well, actually Room Well, the reason is because there's six rooms in my house. That's great. Which sounds like I'm rich. Trust me. There's a story. Two of them are bathrooms. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> One's a garage. Yeah. All right. Um, but there's a story behind Room 6. But there's a horror movie. Called room six. So anytime you, if you, you know, I'm like seven or down the line. If you look at you know, Google room six on YouTube or anything, or if you look on YouTube, it's never right there at the top because this horror movie has all these oh, room six interviews. Boom. Room six reviews. <laughs> so I did, I did kind of, it's kind of like um, Dave Grohl said, if, if I had known it was going to turn into this thing, I wouldn't have named it Foo Fighters. Yeah. It's a stupid name. Yeah. <laughs> To be fair, though, we can have hair. To be fair, to be fair, to be fair. To be fair. Oh, so nice. So glad you guys jumped in. Um, <laughs> it's unique, though. I should have come up with something more unique. Hey. It is unique in its own right. You weren't. Yes. You know, when it comes to titles and shit, it's it's a thing. Like people get mm -hmm. upset about titles or whatever. Like you brought that up, and uh, yeah. doesn't matter. Like, well, it's you've like, got a backstory. You's like, I have six rooms in my house. I picked this. That's right. cool. Room six is where the guitar wall is. That's, that's why awesome. I room six. Also, that's the, it's the attic. It's the cellar. It's the dump room. Right. And eventually I said, hey, can I, you guys care if I take this room and make a thing out of it? That's, that's mine. Um, and then I started working from home uh, a few jobs ago. And 
that was my office. And suddenly I was like, you know what? I can, let me try this YouTube thing. Thank you everybody who subscribed, by the way. I really do appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Click here. Um, I believe we're on to you for, did you do your, your you did his maintenance tips? You? Maintenance? Or, oh, uh, your, uh, your, your no, we never did your advice. We never did. Oh, I mean, he said, don't do it. Uh, <laughs> Among other things, but what's uh, your advice? What, what do you wish someone had told you when you were starting? I don't know about wish someone would have told me, but I mean, to get like, like, I mean, I agree with what they both said too. I mean, especially the practice thing. Mm -hmm. So practice, practice, practice. Um, cause what I did may then. not have been what someone else would do. I don't know. I mean, I just, I always learned song, like songs mm -hmm. is always what pushed me to get better. And I kept learning songs and I gathered all different kind of techniques from playing different songs, you know? So that's kind of what pushing that you know get where i'm at today i know never stop growing yeah. never stop growing never stop buying guitars yep. yeah <laughs> i want to thank minus for having me over and being on room six it was a great interview and a great well great show um you can check out more from them right here and uh Thanks for coming. If you want to support the content you love, please consider clicking the uh, links down in the description for my Patreon page or maybe buy a CD. If you want to buy their CD, link will also be down in the description. And uh, they have tickets as well. What's your next upcoming show? February 6th at uh, Backstage Bar and Billiards here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Nice. Playing with who? Soulfly. Yeah. Who's that? What does <laughs> that say right there? Soulfly with Toxic Holocaust. Yeah. And Minus. So definitely check them out. Um, I'll have links to the Eventbrite um, tickets as well and uh, down in the description. Remember to be amazing. If you want to see more videos like this, click here. If you want to subscribe, click here. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Room 6.